So I'm sitting here staring at my computer and I'm talking to myself. And I'm thinking, this is the weirdest gig I've ever had in my life, teaching like this. My name's Chris, and over the course of the next nine weeks, I'm going to be trying to figure out what's the best way to, to communicate with you guys using um, these tools, using the, uh, the, the tablet PC and uh, the Internet. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this experience, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a challenge, and I'm sure we're both going to learn um, through this whole process. If you're uh, if you're more experienced, if you're if you've already kind of been through the ringer, done a few boards, uh, this may may all seem a little bit redundant. And for that, I apologize. I just need to start the course in, in a very basic way, so I'm sure that we're all talking the same language and we're all communicating um, using the same sorts of words. So, from our very early days as a species. Our ancestors have communicated with each other using visual storytelling techniques, namely scratches on the wall. And while we have evolved to a higher form of communication, words, blah, 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 most of us viscerally experience the world using these things, namely our peepers. And while most visual stories start off as ideas on a page, otherwise known as a script or a bunch of words, blah, 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 most consumers of visual mediums experience the stories through devices such as these, that is, television, movies, the internet, that kind of stuff. And the role of a storyboard artist is basically a translator to take the words on the script and visually translate them into images that will fit into this box. And while the job is a lot of fun and very exciting, it is not without pain, and it is not without frustration, and it is not without a certain degree of torture. For me, the scariest thing when it comes to facing an assignment, to facing a story job, is this. The first blank page. And the reason for that is basically... The horizons are endless. It's like getting dropped off in the wild tundra uh, with, with no compass, a, a, a loose map, and, and very little sense of direction. All you know is that somewhere over one of those horizon lines, somewhere over one of those mountain ranges, is the lost city of Xanadu. And if you take the right step, and if you follow the right pathway, you'll get there. But how do you take that first step? How do you find the right pathway? Well, the first thing you need to do is trust yourself. You need to calm down, take a few deep breaths. And what always helps me break loose of my fear is to change my perception of the job and think about it in a very different way. Now it's true, when I go about my work, I use tools such as these, pencils, papers, erasers, a Cintiq. But mentally, what I need to start thinking about is using one of these. Because essentially, what I am is an imaginary cameraman. And I'm going to take my camera, and I'm going to go out into the world. Into what world? Well, the world that's on the page, the world that I need to translate. And that world is a very real world, with real props, and real trees, and real stuff, and a real ground. Real characters. Real character interactions. Real drama. Real atmosphere. And through that camera, I get to choose how I communicate all of those things to my audience. And how do I know what ideas to communicate and what ideas not to communicate? Well, I need to read my characters. I need to know who my characters are. As the visual storyteller, it's my job to understand them. What's he thinking? What are the bees thinking? What's this old lady thinking? So through my imaginary camera lens, I start to illustrate the story. And I start to illustrate the lives of these characters on a piece of paper. And once I get that thought process nailed down and in place, one drawing leads to two, and two drawings leads to three. And next thing you know, you got stacks of paper everywhere, and you got stuff pinned to the wall, and it is amazing. It is the most wonderful tool for visual storytelling, because it's simple. Because there's nothing as efficient, as lively, as vibrant as a drawing pinned to a wall or a drawing digitally captured on a layer in a Photoshop document. And the most beautiful thing about this very advanced technology of QuickSketch is that it's disposable. 
You can pull that drawing off the wall if that drawing gets in the way of your big idea. And what is the big idea? The big idea is the central thrust of your story. It's what your story is about. It's the story that you want to tell.